Mr. Trump, thank you so much for being here tonight. Mr. Trump, in a recent interview with the Washington Post, you said that the U.S. should become a diminishing presence in NATO. Why, Absolutely. Why do you think that the U.S. Okay. should start to withdraw their world presence from NATO, and what would you change about the organization so that we could remain involved? Okay. I did two basic and very large interviews yeah. recently. I did the New York Times, which treated me unbelievably fairly, and there was a front page story on Sunday, or I think, yeah. and it was a great story, and it, it, part of it was NATO, and the other was the Washington Post, where I, I think said, you talked to them longer than any other candidate, by the way, or, or on the Republican side. I spoke to side. the Times yeah. longer? Well, I spoke to him a long time. David, he's a very talented writer, actually, and they treated me very fairly. Uh, I also did the Washington Post, where I said very similar things and very similar things about NATO. Uh, let me tell you, NATO is obsolete. It was 67 years, or it's over 60 years old. Uh, it is many countries, doesn't cover terrorism, okay? It covers the Soviet Union, uh, which is no longer in existence. And NATO has to either be rejiggered, rechanged, you know, changed for the better. I'm not saying the other thing that's bad about NATO, we're paying too much. We're spending a tremendous billions and billions of dollars on NATO. You're saying it's obsolete, though. You have now Vladimir Putin. Uh, invading Crimea, annexing part of right. Ukraine, uh, annexing well, let me, Crimea. Let me tell you about Ukraine. First of all, uh, there are countries that surround. More you have countries that you have countries that surround Ukraine. They don't talk. They don't seem to have a problem. I'm not saying go in. I'd say you'd be very strong. You could be strong without necessarily even being into NATO. The money we spend, the money we spend is astronomical on NATO. Okay, the you Ukraine. Really NATO is obsolete. I think it's largely obsolete, yeah. It's got to be changed. It's got to be, you don't, you don't talk about terror. Our single biggest threat right now is terror, okay? Now, that's an amorphous term, but it's terror. Our single biggest threat is So you would is like that. to see an organization revamped, either NATO either revamped, revamped or NATO. Another. Now, if you do that, you're going to obviously have to add different nations in because you have nations that aren't in NATO that are very much into the world of terror, both in terms of causing it and receiving it. So you probably have to either start something or you have to do something. When you look at Brussels, hey, look, you remember a couple of months ago, I made a statement about Brussels. I said it's a hellhole. That's because it's a financial, very big financial capital. Many of my friends are there. They know exactly what's going on. I haven't been there in many years. I was there. It was a beautiful city. Now it's not good. And I said it was a hellhole. The New York Times attacked me rather viciously for calling a place a hellhole. Two months later, we had the attack, and it turned out I was right. It's a hellhole. And on Twitter and all over the place, they're saying Trump was right, Trump was right. I understand this stuff. I mean, I really do understand this stuff. NATO is obsolete. Now, that doesn't mean it can't be rejiggered, and it can't be fixed and made good, or And for you, it's is that possible. largely a financial component, that when you talk about We're rejiggering too it? much. You have countries in NATO, I think it's 28 countries, okay. you have countries in NATO that are getting a free ride, and it's unfair. It's very unfair. The United States cannot afford to be the policeman of the world anymore, folks. We have to rebuild our own country. We have to stop with this stuff. You have, as an example, Ukraine. You don't have Germany talking about Ukraine. You don't have many of the countries in NATO talking about it. It's always us. We're always the first one out. We have very big problems in our country, very, very big problems. NATO has to be easy either change or we have to do something. And we shouldn't be paying most of the cost of NATO because it's unfair. It's unfair to our taxpayers and to our people.